Well, welcome. Uh, hopefully, welcome back to another episode of the Imperfect Men's Club podcast. Um, my name is Mark Ilward. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Jim Gurley. And um, today we're going to talk about thought leadership. We uh, we talked uh, in our last episode about critical thinking. And as I was saying to you, Jim, I think they're very closely related and you seem to agree with me. Um, <clears throat> I think this is this is something that comes from a, a significant amount of experience in a particular area. And as, as we were talking about it, Jim, it's could be an industry, could be a, a science, could be a, a, a particular subtopic within an industry. Uh, so I don't think it's constrained by the size of the area of expertise. I think it's more constrained by the, the depth and breadth of one's knowledge within a particular space. But the, here's the definition from Wikipedia. A thought leader is an individual or firm recognized as an authority in a specific field. A thought leader is a person who specializes in a given area and whom others in that industry turn to for guidance. As the term implies, a thought leader leads others in the thinking around a given topic. Um, yeah, one of the, you know, back to our wheel, and I'll pass it back to you, Jim. I think this is certainly... Um, it could be any of the particular areas, but I, I think mostly about the profession, one's profession. If you've been doing the same thing professionally for a long time and doing it well, and you've gained the credibility and respect of other people in that particular space, um, chances are you're a thought leader. I think you probably have to have a willingness to be considered as such as well. And I don't think this is something that you self-proclaim. I think anyone who identifies as a thought leader is not a thought leader. That's <laughs> for others to determine, in my humble opinion. But what do you think about that, Jim? Yeah, well, like you said, I always appreciate you tying it back to our uh, our flywheel, right? And what areas thought leadership, uh, how's it related? So again, the center starting with your self-awareness and that... So we, whether we are, we're aware of it or not, we're all influenced by a thought leader. And mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate your, ex, your uh, example of Jordan Peterson. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's clearly a thought leader and he affects the thoughts of millions and millions of people. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, back to, you know, <clears throat> the center of the, of the circle is the self-awareness and then how this uh, radiates out to these mm -hmm. five areas of our life. Uh, worldview, of course, mm -hmm. thought leadership. Yeah. Just, that that's probably the biggest one. Um, but yeah, your, your industry, if in your profession, um, thought leadership, as far as relationships with other people, your mother, father, parents, that, that, that's when you're younger, there's, those are thought leaders, right? Mm -hmm. Um, of course your mental health, <laughs> how you manage your, the intake or the, uh, the information that you consume mm -hmm. will affect your mental and physical health. So it's, it's mm -hmm. related to that. Um, and then uh, money, and of course, everything's related to money. Um, but I also, Mark, appreciate you, you tying this to critical thinking and the timeliness of this. I think maybe even larger than we realize when when we start to talk about um, AI and how that is. Uh, I, I so I apologize in advance. I've I've um, I've done like a three day deep dive into AI and specifically uh, what's what is the new terminology is referred to as. Uh, uh, not big AI. Big AI is Jet GPT, some of these other uh, huge, huge uh, AI engines. But there's what was what they're called, small AIs, and that's be business intelligence. Everything is going to get uh, it really in a very couldn't be good way. Uh, let's just say programmed to remove friction and thought leadership is exactly what is needed to program those individual models, whether it's business intelligence. In our case, we have a topic, but those are, those are AI models that are being built as we speak. And so mm -hmm. it, this couldn't be a more important topic right, right now. Cause this, and, and, and I don't, again, I, I'm optimistic about how AI is going to help us and make us more efficient, remove efficiencies. However, thought leadership has uh will be our knowledge especially at our age uh will will get programmed into this or will not and there's mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of dangerous stuff out there if we don't have let's say responsible thought leaders that have 
good intentions for humanity. So uh, yeah, it's it's I know very interesting. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's good. It's very interesting because you know one of the things that I expressed to you the other day is my doubts about AI is just that the 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 design of whatever AI system it is at at that the back end is a human being, you know, yes. and yes. Uh, or a or a group of human beings. That and if they are that yeah, model, yeah, correct. If if yeah. they are not um, yeah. significantly capable, competent, and well-intentioned thought leaders within whatever space they're playing, whatever sandbox they're playing, yeah, we're in trouble. Well, you know? we, we could be. That's why yeah. there's there's a bit sense of responsibility, mm -hmm. and that's why I just learned the term this morning, and I think it describes it best. There is called um, big AI. And mm -hmm. small AI and small mm -hmm. AI is, is the level playing field because, you know, you and I, and we, we probably will do this with our, our podcast and our content, create our own, um, intelligent, um, AI that, mm -hmm. that allows the content we've created to pull that information in, in relationship to the terminology, to the, 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 uh, the tags, the keywords, all that. Mm -hmm. And, um, then that's very good. That makes things very fast. It, but but again, that's not that doesn't go out to the internet and pull that information. It pulls from uh, a document or a vocabulary that we've created, uh, maybe even a narrative. So yep. this is going to yep. happen in all parts of our life, yep. know, particularly in the next months or or coming years. It, well, it, I think the um, what I kind of like to do is kind of go back to you bringing up Jordan Peterson and. We can swing back around to AI and how it connects to thought leadership whenever you want. But I think the um, when I look at him and I I've I've watched a lot of Jordan Peterson and and I think you have too. And, a fair um, amount. I'm I, not, not probably as much, but but I appreciate not to interrupt you, Mark. But I think it's important, like you said. Let's throw out a couple other ones too, right? There's Joe Rogan, there's The View. Those three gals or four gals that that's a you know that that that, has, that pushes out a lot of thought to a huge audience. So. Yeah. And that's, the, that's, you know, you bring them up and, and there's two sides to thought leadership, right? You can be, th you can help people think the wrong way, or you can help people think well, that, the right way. Yeah. That's our opinion that they're the wrong way, but that's, yep. but that yep. doesn't mean that we're right. And, and no. they, they clearly no. uh, push out a lot of thought every day uh, about, and, and, they, and, and it, people believe them and listen to them, you know, you, well, can just I, I, well, but you have to respect their uh, individual opinions. Well, you know, when you take back the critical thinking piece and all the things that go into that in terms of being unbiased and making observations mm -hmm. and gathering facts and analyzing things and evaluating things and, and bringing some skepticism and questioning things, mm -hmm. um, I think you have to be a critical thinker if you are going to be a thought leader. Mm -hmm. Because when you throw out people that I don't agree with, whoever, doesn't matter. Yeah, I, it's more important to me to be able to say, is what they just said based on a thoughtful analysis an unbiased, thoughtful analysis, or are they simply emoting? And um, I think far too many people simply emote. And, yeah. and this is one of my favorite things about Jordan Peterson. And I'm not picking on the view or anybody else. Cause I think Bill Maher is another guy who's a thought leader for sure. Yeah. And I don't agree. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with him about everything. Mm -hmm. I probably don't agree with anyone about everything, you know, yeah. um, but what Jordan Peterson, because he's a thought leader in the space of psychology. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because there is a difference. You know, he he does understand he's a scientist to some degree, mm -hmm. right? So he understands the mechanics of the human brain. He understands mm -hmm. that in depth. You know, he's, he's he's a Ph.D. in psychology or he's a doctor of, of mm -hmm. At a university, it's very different than the gals from the View. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's also so face it. Uh, I know he started off. I don't think he started off. Uh, he started off as a, as a professor and then evolved. But but he's a well, very yeah, I know. thinking thinker. Yeah. And and that other the, let's just let's just pick on the View. That is a that is a business. That is a machine that mm -hmm. sells advertising. And their starting places are very different. So. Yeah, he, there, I look at the view as as entertainment. I don't. Yeah. I don't look. I well, think Fox that's what News the, could be looked as as entertainment too. Right? Could be. Could yeah. be. Yeah, because all of these things evolve, right? And and ju yeah. just as Jordan Peterson has, I think, you know, when he when he gets interested in something, 
he dives all in. Yeah. So I would venture that he's probably a thought leader in five or 10 yeah. different spaces. Yeah. You know, you know how, how to advise young men, yeah. psychology, uh, mental yeah. illness, psychedelics. I think I mentioned to you, I, uh, I saw him live in San Francisco a couple of years you ago. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. And, uh, and I, I, I think I remember sharing with you what, what was so cool about the experience was the people there. It was, it was cool. It, everybody got along mm -hmm. and there was, it was very diverse. It was downtown San Francisco. So, you know, as you as diverse as you're going to, going to get, mm -hmm. uh, but, but back to critical thinkers, people, sure they agreed with him but but i think they were the type of people that like the way um he presents himself or i should say the, the his logical thinking right there's a logical mm -hmm. uh, component to to how he develops his thoughts and um he's very unique i think in that way cuz uh, and it's interesting how how he gets certain people so revved up so charged up right it's it's yeah, you know another interesting thing about him, and I was just thinking about it as you're talking, because now his daughter's in the game, uh -huh. his son, his son has actually gotten into the game as well. He was in Are the they sidelines. As good as he is? Yeah. Um. Well, they don't have the life experience he does, so not yeah. yet. But they yeah. both have great potential, you know. Yeah. So, um, there's something to be said for just you know being around for a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're if you're paying yeah. attention and you care. The other thing that strikes me is I don't think Jordan Peterson, and I don't know this whether this is true or not. I don't think he started any of this looking for any fame or any right. money. I, and, I think um, you're right. think and that's why I think that. his opinions are so pure. I think he got dragged into the fame and mm -hmm. got dragged into the money. He hasn't turned it away. He's yeah. not, you know, but there, I remember a period of time a couple of years ago where he was in bad shape Yeah, and it's because the weight of the world was now on his shoulders sure. from going from a professor at the university of Toronto in obscurity mostly to one of the most famous people in the world, not only the most famous people in the world, but some, someone who has a very strong opinion that half the population of the world probably doesn't agree with. Yeah. So, um, well, but, let's run with this, that again, this, this, this move on from Jordan Peterson to other thought leaders. How about the president of the United States of America right now, Joe Biden? He He's a thought leader. Um, he, he is perceived as such by some. Uh, no. I think one of the worst thought leaders we've ever had in human history. Uh, I mean, he's well, horrible as far as being inspiring or he has no charisma. He is terrible. Well, uh, you know, the thing that the, the other thing that I think in a, a thought leader needs needs to have is authenticity. And Joe Biden has none. Interesting. You know, yeah. say what you want yeah. about Donald Trump, but the guy's authentic. He says <laughs> he says the same stuff all the time. He's yeah. consistent and, and, and authentic. And, say we, and he is a thought leader because he's yep. got a lot of people thinking, you know, some crazy shit, whether it's yep. whether you believe yep. him or not. Uh, well, I think he's got, in my opinion, he's got and this is interesting. All these thought leaders are different, but I think all of them are probably polarizing in some capacity because they're so entrenched in their leadership thoughts that, you know, the other half pe people that don't agree with them. So that's a dynamic. Mm -hmm. I also think, as I said before, you don't self-identify as a thought leader. I think that if, if people in the industry or the space in which you're speaking are seeking out what you have to say, because they like the way you do it or the content of it or the authenticity of it, or that it's clear You've you've critically thought through this. You're not just emoting. You've got some good points. You've got some good data. Mm -hmm. You've got some good metrics, some math, as yeah. you like to say. But um, yeah, yeah I think most thought leaders are probably polarizing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they yeah, they can be. It's like anything. It's the size of the audience. The more the larger your audience grows, the more people are going to disagree with you or, mm -hmm. or agree with you, and then disagree with you. So, so it's uh, well, I think, you know, I think back to like a Martin Luther King uh, talk about a thought leader or or Gandhi, you know, we're getting some big names in there. And, and yeah. these are people that started talking about a message and they just grew and grew in popularity. Yeah. But ultimately, Gandhi was mistreated and Martin Luther King was killed. Yeah. So uh, obviously polarizing, you know, uh, and anybody yeah. that would do such a thing is also crazy. So I have a question for you on this, Mark. Give me an example of a, a rise and fall of a thought leader in recent time, like a really good, bad example of somebody that 
came on strong, was super popular, and then later on was laughed off the stage or un. Who was that guy, the senator or the congressman from North Carolina that was all high and mighty 10 or 15 years ago? John. Anyway, he ended up he was he was self-righteous and he ended up having an affair and an illegitimate kid. And he's I don't think he's been seen or heard from since then. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah, what I'm a, looking for. An examples, some examples of that where we we all well, we were duped in believing that this guy really had something to say, and he found out later it was all bullshit or yeah, those uh, guys go those. Authentic. Yeah. Those people go so quickly into obscurity yeah. that I, I forget about them. But I was, who is the couple, Tammy and uh, the religious? Uh, that's, the, a, that's, a, that's actually a good example. But yeah, that, uh, the Tammy Faye or. Um, no, it was, uh, the, there was a uh, yeah, husband. And, they ran a huge church. Yeah, huge church, made a ton yeah. of money and then yeah. scandals galore. And, yeah. and just the whole thing caved in. Well, that's because I don't think there was any authenticity there. I think that if you're authentic, yeah. chances are whatever you're doing is sustainable. And if you're not, yeah, you're gonna well, somebody's yeah, gonna they catch use, you. And they use religion. They use uh, God mm -hmm. to to um, yeah to basically steal money from people. Yeah. Um, let's how about Tony Robbins for for example? Do you what, what do you, he's clearly a thought leader, but where do you yeah. I think he's authentic. I think, you know, one of the things that I heard about him and I can't remember who it was, but it was a pretty good, solid internet marketing guy. And he bought a ticket for two or three grand to one of Tony Robbins mm -hmm. events. Yeah. And, um, he, he just wanted to see who he was. He wanted to, what yeah. this guy's doing marvelous things. He's changing people's lives. I want to go see him for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And he said he walked out in about 15 minutes and I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He said, I got nothing against what Tony Robbins is doing. I just didn't realize how fucked up all these people were. Yeah, the, the Those, cult environment that, that this, he attracts. These, that, that a lot of these people that are a lot of these people yeah. that are coming to see him have yeah. contemplated suicide or have spent their last two thousand dollars to get in oh, front wow. of this guy because yeah. everything else is gone. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Some really, really wretching stories. And yeah. when you pull somebody out of that space and make them well again. That's God's work. I, I totally respect what he's doing. Yeah. I just don't think he's for me, you know? Interesting. That's, that's a fair uh, explanation. I, I know uh, two or three people that have been to the program, and and that was, they walked on the coals and did the whole ceremony of that. And they, they did say it, it gets a little bit uh, cultish uh, environment because, like I said, half those people probably should be seen a shrink instead of going to Tony Robbins. Probably are. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> but if, if, if you think about it though, Jim, like was, it wasn't your, your rugby team, a bit of a cult. I mean, oh, didn't you know, you... it's well, well, important point, Mark. Yeah. yeah I think you, to have any, he had, wasn't your company at one time, a yep. bit of a cult in order totally. to be effective. You, you had, had to buy in, right? Yep. So yep. I, I, yep. no, I appreciate that. The balance of thought and that to, to achieve anything good, you're going to have to get people to buy into one belief system. And that takes a, a really powerful thought leader. To, you know, so. it's, it's uh well, it's a powerful thought for me because I'm in fact a thought leader, Jim, you know, you so said you, you already knew that. <laughs> so proclaim. Yeah. Hey, well, since you disclosed that, I'll go ahead and say that I'm one too. Right. Yeah. yeah like no, the it's, biggest, it's, uh, it's interesting. I think we, like I said, the biggest douche on the planet is a self-proclaimed. Yeah, yeah. No, there's definitely, that was definitely a sarcastic joke. Uh, yes. Um, yes yeah. But I wanted to throw it out there because I think it's worthy of attention. I, I, I'm back to the authenticity thing. I think that, you know, what I get from Jordan Peterson and, and Tony Robbins for that matter is they yeah. actually give a shit. You know, they actually care about what they're doing because of the quality of thought that they put into things and the amount of time and energy that they put into things it's clear to me that they're both, they both believe in what they're doing. And um, I think that's it, important. It does. And uh, let's just talk about narcissism because I do think we all have it, part of it. So I think it's a human thing, but the, the real narcissist, like the next level, um, you almost, to, to be a real, let's just say figure, I think there is a, a bit of narcissism in that in order to want to have that fame or to do that. So again, there, I, don't, there, I don't see that in a negative way. I yeah. think I, 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 I accept narcissism as part of a human element, right? We're selfish beings. We, we think of ourselves and it's like anything, it, it, it could go too far, but you have to balance that. 
Well, um, you know, when, when we first started talking mm -hmm. about this concept of the flywheel and the podcast and mm -hmm. the imperfect men's club, I remember how reticent you were to talk about certain things mm -hmm. and that's, that's evolved over time. And when I think of that in the context of being a thought leader, you didn't maybe consciously make the decision, but one day or over the course of a couple of weeks or months, whatever it was, you started turning around to that, seeing the value. If I believe in what I'm saying, I probably should consider sharing this with more people because it might be helpful. Yeah. And that's what I'm describing. I don't know if that's yeah. how it evolved yeah. for well, you. I, but I appreciate you mentioning that. And I did a little self-reflection on that one. Uh, and again, I th and I'll give you, you know, definitely a, a lot of credit for that because I, I do, I think I, I, I read something or listened to something about um, we have an obligation to, to share what we have, to give it mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. to, to, mm -hmm. and to hold it in our head is almost a selfishness. Right. Yeah. And then the fear of being criticized, that's, you know, that it takes courage to put yourself out there knowing that not everybody's going to agree with you. Right. But well, it's it's a. I think that you have to to be a thought leader. You have to make the choice that that's that's okay. I can yeah. because I know what's going to come with that. Criticism yeah. is going to come with that. Disagreement is going to come with that. Um, you're exposing yourself to people's opinions. To your point, which is scary. And yeah. uh, I think I'm past that. Maybe not all of it, but yeah, I think I think we both are. And we've. Been, I mean, we're also remember. I'm I, I owned a sales agency for for you know, twenty five years. Yep. And um, I think I, I I got to the point where I just didn't want to sell anymore. I, mm -hmm. I, and everything is sales. Everything is is persuasion, right? Per persuade one person to believe something, to take an action. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think sales is in every everything we do. I mean, an eight year old child is selling his mom on to get more candy. That yep. that's yeah. No, it is. It's, it's that's an persuasion interesting in that. Um, it's an interesting topic. I think the, um, but I have to believe as well because of your uh, experience and how you climb that ladder. You started making cabinets, then you started selling them, and then you established mm -hmm. your own agency. It's like mm -hmm. by the time you're talking to people after that experience, there's not a whole lot of objections that you can't combat. There's not a mm -hmm. whole lot of information that you don't yet know. Mm -hmm. And I feel I feel the same way about staffing. You know, I was a recruiter, mm -hmm. then I was a sales rep, then I was a recruiting manager, a sales manager, then I became an owner. And uh, at some point, it's like, I, don't, I haven't talked to anybody in a long time about career development and said, you know, I don't know that. I don't know that. And so, yeah. but but it's as you alluded to earlier, you got to make the decision at some point. I don't mind being on camera. I don't mind the microphone in my face. I don't mind. I I, I actually feel genuinely like I'm helping people, people that are interested in being helped yeah. that, that can benefit from the things that I perhaps know. Yeah. Um, so it, I, there's probably a lot of thought leaders out there that just don't have the desire to be heard by the masses yeah. and, um, uh, and they're yeah. more quiet thought leaders. Yeah. You remind me of something and again, I've never, uh, I guess articulated or, or said it publicly, but I do remember this, uh, almost like an epiphany, where I realized I have this ability to persuade people to do things. Mm -hmm. The question is it, it, that is it, is it for their good or for my good? And I think mm -hmm. there was a, a point in life where I realized be careful, right? Just because you can persuade somebody to do something doesn't mean it's always for the good of, of, of humanity or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. right? Good of others mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and that's and i do think that some people uh, to your point earlier about uh people that have taken it too far and then they mm -hmm. they, they exploit people or they 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 fall in love with themselves of, of the the power of making money or the power mm -hmm. of uh, what they get from it and, and yep. it's uh, it can be very dangerous right it, it causes people to do some some bad things so uh, yeah, no, I think that, you know, fame and fortune are, you know, historically bring people down, uh, mm -hmm. maybe as often as they prop people up. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about, I think about the, the, the false nature of certain thought leadership, too. It's like we give so much attention to the opinions of professional athletes and celebrities, mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily have any thought leadership in the area of that they're speaking about. Like, 
to to believe that I give a shit what Robert De Niro thinks about politics. I don't give yeah. a shit what Robert De Niro thinks about anything. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. Like, and another I, interesting uh, example, right? This is a guy that gets paid to pretend to be somebody else. That's right. And then he gets then he gets on uh, TV and expects everybody to believe that he is saying is not somebody. You know. It, <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a, a narcissist, right? Yeah, he's very much a narcissist. And yeah. they were, I watched a, a, a critical, yeah. what a uh, douche. Well, is, well yeah. a series of short videos on him. And he, one of them, he was walking around on a Hollywood set yeah. and he's, he's known for wearing lifts because he's tiny. Yeah. And he, yeah, and he's got a, his ego is so big. Yeah. He needs a three or four inch lift and he, and he won't have actresses that are taller than he is. All, all kinds of stupid oh, yeah. shit like that. Crazy stuff. You know? Yeah. yeah. That, but that's not thought leadership. That's egomania, you know? You're right. But there's sometimes it's a fine line, right? It is. He, it is. he went out there and thought he was going to be a thought leader. He thought, he thought that just because he was an actor, he made a lot of movies, pretended to be somebody else. Yeah. Right, yeah. On a script that he would be believable. And, and, I, I I thought it was kind of hilarious. They 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 laughed him off the street, didn't they? And they well, they, yeah. They I mean, I, I I think he's. I mean, it's it's. I think you also have to be cognizant. You have to surround yourself with people that will tell you the truth. Yeah. You know. So if you are if you are slowly becoming a douche, like none of my friends would ever let that happen. Not <laughs> that I would ever want to become one or be tempted to become one, but. I, I have, there's no one in my life that wouldn't call bullshit on that, you know? Yeah. And I think some of these celebrities get insulated from the truth because they just have hangers on, yeah. you know? Well, it's, the, there's the thought leader for what people say. Right. But then it, I, I'm a big believer and it's not what you say, it's what you do. And to lead yep. great leaders, uh, model a behavior and that mm -hmm. behavior uh, that is modeled ha has, is much more powerful than the words that come out of their mouth. I've mm -hmm. always said you've heard me say that about um, being a father. Is that it? Uh, again, years ago, this my assistant for years. She was fantastic. She was Japanese, and we were driving back. Um, did a big show down in L.A., so we had a six, five, six hour drive from um, San Francisco to Los Angeles, and she saw the stuff I was doing with the, with my high school and the mentoring because those kids were the high school kids were coming in and out of the office all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd have these senior dinners and all these different events. And she would see that. And she was, uh, she said, now you join me. Now, join. She was with me for like 10 years. And she says, I see all this thing you're doing. She says in the Japanese culture, I can't describe the English uh, version of it, but it's, uh, she says as a, as a Japanese father, they raise their children from their back. And she's pointing to her back. She's touching mm -hmm. her back. She's saying, the back up. What do, you, what do you mean? And she, Minori, she says, "Yeah, she says the uh, my father, Japanese fathers, they don't say a lot. They it's they show what what to do. Yeah, and, and I yep. and I always thought that was fascinating, right? That 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 it's true. Good good leadership is modeled. Not yes, it doesn't have to be the words. And then if you go back in life, like your father sounds like it was a great model of." of a father, right? So he, he, he's my father, father said very few words, but, yep. but I did see him go get up and go to work every single morning. I did see yep. him uh, respect my mother. I saw him provide. And, and that is, that's thought that's leadership. It's yeah. Well, it's back to authenticity. Leadership. It's back yeah. to authenticity. Right. I think that, you know, one, and, and I'm, I, I'm kind of like beaten on Jordan Peterson said, because he's such an easy example. Yeah. Um, if I suspect that because I know what I know about him from having investigated him because I was so intellectually curious about him as soon as I first saw him, that he he eats the way he tells people to eat. Mm -hmm. He does not drink alcohol or take drugs. Yeah. I think he used to drink alcohol. Um, he has empathy for uh, yeah. people with mental illness. He has um, he looks trim and fit. Um, yeah, he talks he has, about that. He talks, he talks about, about that. He looks yeah, he looks he, presentable. He, Yep. He adores his wife and she adores him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a great, he seems to be a great father to his children. I mean, yeah, uh, the guy, has, the guy walks faith, right? He, yep, has, he talks about his faith and the evolution of his faith, which is not nearly as, yeah. was as deep as it is now. Yeah. And um, yeah. And he's, so I think to your point, I think he's walking the walk as well as mm -hmm. talking the talk. And I think you're not a thought leader unless you're doing the things you're, you're talking about, you yeah. know? 
Otherwise, yeah, one, one last thought on that. So then I, I was uh, one of my very good friends at the time was I think I was still playing rugby, and he, uh, he's a uh, eighth grade school teacher, eighth and ninth grade. So and for many years and had championship uh, flag football teams, golf teams, very very good at what he does. Um, athletic director, coach, da, da, da. and he was uh, he. I told him the story about how Japanese men raised their children from their backs. And he added to it. I thought it was a fascinating um, addition to that. He says it's not just what they see; it's it's what it's what they how people react to you. So, for example, if you're having a conversation with somebody, your children, especially when they're younger, um, will see something that you never see, and that is how people react to you. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Huh? No, that's fascinating. Uh, I yeah, thought it was because a fascinating perspective, but it is, but it is, yeah, and and it's 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 so true, and that's why back to what I said earlier about being surrounded by good people because people yeah. people will share things like that with you that you can't yeah. see or hear because you're that's in it, right? You know, that's right, you're in it. Yeah, you you, you totally got it. Th thanks. Well, the 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 other the other thing that you know you you, you have to to be self aware. I think you have to be able to occasionally step out of your own shoes and try and look back in yeah. and to, to see like in the proverbial mirror, you know, I yeah. think that's a healthy exercise. So yeah, yeah, Jim, no, it's a great topic. I think we could, uh, we could take it in a lot of different directions, but we're bumping up on it. So I think the, um, my, my kind of final thoughts are uh, something that you said earlier and people could disagree with this, but I feel compelled by it. And it's my connection to God, which is, if you have the ability to help other people, then you have an obligation to do so. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel very strongly about that. And I think most effective thought leaders are driven by something like that as well, you know, mm -hmm. but I also respect people who don't have the courage to do that or are too fearful to do that. I don't, I don't try and judge those types of people. But um, I think those are both kind of true statements. But if, if you're out there, if you're listening and you know deep down inside you have experience and wisdom that might help somebody else, I would ask you to self-reflect on whether or not there's more you could do in that area. Yeah, Mark, I only would like to add to that is that I, I think that you have to be careful or not you, you know, we have we have to be careful of offering unsolicited advice because mm -hmm. so much of it is timing, right? T timing. Are they ready for it? Do they want it? Mm -hmm. um, and so I've, I've really pulled back probably in recent years or months uh, of giving somebody, so let's just say in a, a perspective or an opinion, unless they ask for it. Be, because yeah, um, it's, a, it's it's no, it's a valid point i think that what it makes me think of is you know that's why i try in my writing and i've had the help of a number of people over the years with my communication and my writing and and all the however i communicate which is that people are less interested in your conclusions and they're more interested in how you got there it's yeah. it's it's so people i i try and say things like in my experience or from my perspective or in my opinion uh, because that's all they are, right? They're just yeah. my 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 perspective on things. And I, if I were to say I know this to be true, or you should do that, or you need to do this, or you have to do that, then I'm just an asshole, you know. Yeah. So I I totally respect what you're saying. I think that's you know what that is. That's discernment. That's the ability to discern. Does this person want to hear what I have to say, and is he ready to hear it, or should I just shut up and you know listen? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, I just, I'm sure in perspective, I was at an event last night, a uh, business event for a uh, grand opening of a, a stone company. Or it's, So it was nice. It was very well done. Um, but you, and I'm, I'm talking about human interaction, right? Not uh, not one way, right? Where you're writing something or like, this is a one way car. You, you and I are having a two way conversation, but it's, it's not a dialogue. It's not an interaction with somebody else. And uh, it's, I'm starting it's kind of sad in a way i see people so uh so busy they just mm -hmm. can't concentrate on anything right it mm -hmm. that they're they're on overwhelm and they're at that they're at a uh level of almost survival 
level, right? Mm -hmm. Where everything is very much on the surface. And, mm -hmm. and that's a, uh, that's something we have to deal with. There's, they, they have so much going on, they can't even concentrate on the conversation, right? Or they're hypersensitive mm -hmm. about everything you say because they're at the surface. And yeah, and, yeah. Well, it's, I it's, know it's a general statement, but yeah, you you you've got to meet somebody where they're at. And right now, I think that there's so much information coming at people, it's it's hard to find them there. Um, it is. It is. I think that, you know, uh, as you well know, uh, this, this, and I was just on one of my daily, uh, you know, SOS things, but it's the inner work. It's the stuff inside. What we mm -hmm. see is the outer, is the outer material stuff. Like, mm -hmm. and, and most of what we do doesn't really have much to do with that. Most of, most of our success and our happiness in my humble opinion is, you know, the inner, our, how, how bright are we inside? How happy are we inside? How how willing are we to share, you know, love and and gr gratitude and kindness to other people? And I think when you do that really well, and I don't think you can ever get as good as you can be later. Mm -hmm. If you keep practicing, you're going to get better. The other stuff on the outside, the busyness and the material possessions and the the clothes and the money and the jewelry and all the trinkets. Mm -hmm. the, the, those will come to you the way they're supposed to come to you as a result of the inner work. I don't, and I think most of us kind of feel like I got to scramble and grind on the outside and that's what they're doing. 